Johann Kernberger, the famous 18th century music theorist, once said that if you can compose a minuet you can compose a whole symphony. Whether or not this was true, in this video I'm going to show you the basics on how to easily write your own minuets in the 18th century classical style. This is Marianne and welcome to my minuet and trio guide. A minuet is a piece usually written in 3-4 time signature. The standard form has 16 bars, which are set in two halves of 8 bars each. Notice that each half ends with a repeat bar. So that's actually 32 bars of music once both halves have sounded twice. Step 1, first half layout. Period and sentence. The first half of a minuet can be set in either of these two formal structures. The period. The standard period structure in a minuet has one half cadence at bar 4 and one perfect authentic cadence at bar 8. A half cadence is a rest on the fifth degree of a given key. In C major the usual bass movement looks and sounds like this. The standard half cadence resolution usually ends with the third of the last chord on the top voice, which in this example is the note B. However, other resolutions are also possible. Now for the perfect authentic cadence, the standard bass motion is as follows. There are different kinds of resolution for the top voices of a perfect authentic cadence, but in all of them the top voice of the last chord must be the first degree of the key, which in this case is the note C. In some cases what we have is a perfect authentic cadence in the fifth degree of the initial key. This is a more complex variant of the period which is called the modulating period. As you can see, cadences play a major role as landmarks in any tonal music structure. If you happen to lack the required knowledge to write your own cadences feel free to use the ones given in these examples. Now let's see the sentence. In terms of cadences the sentence has a simpler structure than the period. It only has one cadence at bar 8 which is usually a half cadence. An alternative of the common half cadence is the so-called converging half cadence, which displays a very specific melody and bass motion as we can see in this example. In a modulating sentence the ending half cadence occurs in the dominant key of the initial key. For instance, if our initial key was C major, the half cadence will rest on the fifth degree of G. So far we have seen four types of formal layout for the first half of a minuet. The period, the modulating period, the sentence, and the modulating sentence. In this video we will focus on the non-modulating types for being slightly easier to deal with. Now let's see how to actually use them. Step 2, composing the first half. Let's start with the period. In a period, the harmony of the first two bars is almost always based on the first and fifth degree of the initial key. The bass pattern displayed here is by far the most common, so we will use it as reference for now. The next step is creating a basic idea for the first bar. It doesn't need to be fancy the simpler the better. Notice that I added a pickup note at the beginning, which was a very common cliché in minuets. Now for the second bar we need a contrasting idea that differs as much as possible from the basic idea. So this is what we've got so far. It's not too bad for a start, but it could use some adjustments. Let's have a closer look. The melody line is good overall, but this part sounds off. 
Notice that what we've got here is just a generic half cadence taken from my previous examples. Now it's time to rework it to fit the current piece in a more organic way. Notice that I modified the upper voice to match the initial motive of the basic idea, creating a sort of self-reference that increases the sensation of unity. Okay, now let's have a look at the bass line. The main problem here is the amount of leaps in a row in our bass line. Whenever possible it's a good idea to try to make our bass proceed by step, especially right after a jump. This will lead to a much more melodic and organic bass line. Notice that this octave leap has more rhythmic than melodic function in order to balance the effect of the half note on the top voice. Finally, I added some inner voices and we're good to go. Notice that you don't have to fill every single beat with four-part harmony. Some spots may demand a lighter texture than others, and it's totally up to you to find the best solution for each case in order to keep things balanced. Now, the second half of a period must start with the same material than the beginning. That's both, the basic idea and the contrasting idea, either literal or varied. The composer must also decide if those materials are to be restated on the same harmony or transposed, generally a perfect fifth higher or a perfect fourth lower. In this case, I will go for the latter option. Notice that despite being transposed and slightly varied, the basic idea and the contrasting idea can still be easily recognized, which is a very important feature of the period. The second part of a period must always feel like a response to the first one. Now, the procedure for the sentence is quite different from the period. In the sentence, the basic idea occupies two measures instead of one. Then this basic idea must be repeated literal or transposed, generally a second up. In the first case, we usually have an explicit or implicit tonic pedal that lasts for the whole duration of the basic idea and its repetition. On the other hand, in the second case, we usually get this bass line pattern where the bass note descends by step. As you can see, I brought the same basic idea used in the last example, simply adjusted to the required two bars length. I'm doing this in order to show you how a given musical idea can be worked out in many different ways. Now all we have to do is transposing this basic idea a second up. And now from the beginning. Now we just need to fill the two bars continuation in order to connect this beginning with the final cadence. The continuation function in a sentence usually revolves around the fragmentation of previously heard material. Here I'm going to use a very simple two bars sequence based on our basic idea. And finally, after a few minor adjustments in order to make everything run smoothly, we get our new sentence complete. Step 3, Second Half Layout the second half of a minuet will always end with a perfect authentic cadence on the last bar. The question is whether there will be an extra half cadence midway or not. In the next section we'll compose two second halves, with and without half cadence in the middle. Step 4. Composing the second half. 
the beginning of the second part always functions as a kind of digression from the first part. Essentially a contrasting section in either expressive or tonal ways. In this example, we'll assume a half cadence in the middle of the second half, which means our digression must fit into the first two measures. Now, there are many ways to articulate the beginning of a second half, but I'm going to show you one of the most commonly used by 18th century composers, which is the Fonta Schema. The Fonta, which means fountain in Italian, was used as a quick tonal excursion from the initial key. As you can see, this schema is built in two parts, the first of which tonicizes the second degree of the main key by means of its secondary dominant, while the second one does the same with the first degree. The result is a descending sequence with a characteristic contrast between minor and major. Keep in mind that this schema can be transposed in order to use it in any key. What we've got here is my own interpretation of a Fonta schema, which includes motivic elements extracted from the first half of the minuet. The last part of the second half tends to be the easiest one to work out. It normally consists in the literal or varied repetition of the last four bars from the first half. In this case, I took the last four measures from my previously composed period, but I went for a varied repetition instead of a literal one to add a more conclusive feeling to it. Now let's see another example of a second half, but this time without middle half cadence. The main difference is that our digression must now occupy four measures instead of just two. The Fonta schema is still a valid option, but I want to show you another commonly used technique, which is the dominant prolongation. This is a very simple resource to maintain certain degree of tonal tension without having to modulate. A dominant prolongation can be presented in the form of a dominant pedal. Or more commonly, as an alternation between dominant and tonic harmonies. This is an example of a possible dominant prolongation beginning. Notice the reference to the basic idea from our previously composed sentence. Now, for the last four bars, I'm going to use the ending of our previously composed sentence. However, the sentence finished in a half cadence, so that means it's going to have to be reworked here in order to end in a perfect authentic cadence. And now from the beginning. So at this point we've got two complete minuets based on the same motivic material. However, as we'll see, the second minuet might as well serve as trio for the first one. The trio. Even though not mandatory, it was common for a minuet to be followed by another piece called trio, with which usually shared the same key and tempo. In a structural level, a trio is essentially a minuet, and all the techniques seen in this video could be perfectly applied for either of them. However, some stylistic differences are expected between a trio and a minuet. Generally speaking, a trio tends to be more charming. It's usually written in a singing style or cantabile, and also has a lighter texture. In origin it was expected to be performed by only three instruments even though, in the 18th century that didn't apply anymore. Like the minuet, the trio was set in two halves of eight bars each with repetitions. During performance, it was customary to repeat the whole minuet after the trio was finished, but this time without repetitions. This is known as minuet de capo. Time to listen to our finished work.
That's all for now. Please let me know if this video was helpful and don't forget to subscribe if you want more content like this. Thanks for watching and see you next time.